first, we want to bring on the House Majority Leader, Delegate Eric Halsorder, making his second appearance on the program this week. That puts you in the frequent talkers club there, Eric. I know. I finally broke my Monday morning schedule. Very nice. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. your availability. Yeah, man, anytime. Hey, I texted you and asked you to let me know when you got the January revenue numbers to see how the state did and um, did we continue our string of surpluses uh, for the month of January, Eric. Oh, absolutely. In fact, for the month of January, our, our, our uh, excuse me, our monthly collections over our actual collections over our estimates were up one hundred and sixty two million dollars just for the month of January. So year to date collections over estimates uh, for your listeners, personal income tax were up one hundred and eighty one million dollars from year to date collections over our total estimates. Uh, consumer sales tax were up 121 million. Uh, severance tax were up 497 million. And corporate net income tax were up an additional 123 million. It's bringing our yearly total up to $995 million surplus just seven months in into the fiscal year. So right now, the state of West Virginia is doing very, very well. Even begs the case or makes the case that, hey, we need to be giving money back to the taxpayers. So, Eric, as these numbers uh, continue seven months in, you've got five months to go. Uh, mm-hmm. So we figure we're probably close to a $2 billion <laughs> surplus. Are the, are the five months to go from a revenue standpoint, are they generally some of the best months of the year, or have we already collected some of the best months of the year in these first seven? February and March can be a little slow, but April, May, and June will be strong for us. So, uh You know, easily, you know, one of the things that the governor has suggested for the personal income tax, if we continue down the path of having a, a, you know, limit your spending with a flat budget, you should see surpluses in excess of $1.2 billion every year for the next four years. And that's the key if we're going to offer personal income tax to our citizens. John? Have they now? They want to obviously want to reduce the personal income tax, which everybody's in favor right. of. Have they thought about instead of that, maybe giving one-time, you know, one-time tax rebates to people, so that down the road, if we do have issues four or five years from now, we're not having to, you know, raise taxes, which is never popular for anyone. Uh, no, no, what we're considering right now are some one-time expenditures for stuff like deferred maintenance, road maintenance, and, and so forth. But uh, the rebates, uh, that that discussion has not came up. Uh, I know the governor, when he was out on the uh, campaign trail against Amendment 2, he talked about a vehicle tax rebate. Maybe at some point that may be revisited. But the logic is, hey, look, if we're going to go down the path to try to eliminate personal income tax, you're far better just to stick with one plan instead of doing something, you know, nibble around the edges, so to speak. Well, and, and but, Eric, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, there, there's no – with the, the types of uh, budget surpluses we have and the projected surpluses, this this is the best time to do that, without it's a doubt. The best time. Yes, yes. Uh, there's been conversations about maybe eliminating the uh, vehicle inspections and stuff like that. But those are some of the things that I'm hearing. No per se rebates, you know, so – Eric, the, and we are talking with the House Majority Leader, Delegate Eric Householder, formerly the finance chairman in the House. This, the monthly for January is $162 million in surplus. $64 yes. million of that is severance taxes. Yes. So there's still almost $100 million of surplus if severance taxes return to their normal state. So I know that the complaints about a tax cut, as a lot of people fear, it's based on a surplus that's artificial because of a temporary boom in severance tax collections. But still, there's still $100 million of surplus if you just net out the severance surplus. Uh, exactly, and you're exactly right, because I've been arguing the same thing, that uh, it, typically if we're on target to have a $1.7 billion surplus and our severance tax falls off $500 million, you're still at a $1.2 billion, $1. billion surplus that you should be able to afford without any hesitation, except for if Republicans do not control the line of spending. That's the key. You know, and, and I've talked several times on this station and other stations that uh, right now we're funding all of the necessary services. Uh, in fact, our budget moderately went up to $4.8 billion, but the magic number is right around $4.65 billion 
that's the sweet spot. If you keep it there, you're going to see, uh, like I said, excess of revenues of $1.2 billion and greater. But, yeah, I'm not concerned if severance does fall off $500 million. It's it's right. You know, we still have the excess funds to be able to provide a tax relief to our citizens. Hey, uh, before I let you go, uh, I watched uh, Real yeah. Sports on HBO last night. It was the January mm-hmm. 24 episode, and they did a segment on AEDs, right? So if you've ta- okay. ever, ever taken a CPR course, you know what an AED is. Mm-hmm. This is the thing they use to shock DeMar Hamlin's right. heart back, to bring life right. back to him on the football field in Cincinnati a few weeks back. And it mentioned there's only 16 schools in the country that require AEDs at athletic events, 34 which do not, which I was shocked, Mm -hmm. no pun intended, to hear. I don't know if West Virginia is one of those schools or not that requires an AED because the thing about the AED is that you got three minutes to get that AED there. To, right. to have to to ensure the survival, I think you had a ninety percent chance of saving a life if you can get an AED there within three minutes. Do you know if West Virginia is a state that requires AEDs at athletic events? And if not, can we make that happen? We could. I mean, I've heard the conversation over the years, but I don't know for a fact if we actually passed any legislation. I know what we are looking at under the safe schools is to uh, spend money to shore up the the entryways of all these schools throughout the state, and it's a huge, huge cost. And uh, that's the only that's the only conversation and talks that we're having right now. But as far as AED, I don't quite remember, Rob. All right. Well, I'm catching you short on that, but planting the bug. Yeah. They, yeah. they cost about a thousand bucks. Right. So, right. worthy calls. Yes. Let's, let's get uh, maybe some people rallying around that. All right. Good enough. Hey, thank Thanks, you, Eric. Guys.